Nice. Subtle. This is probably a bot, but somewhere down the line, a somewhat unwell and unloved child pressed some buttons to make this happen. Why? Are they a troll or disabled? Yes! Hard to tell. How oh, good, two of them. Okay, so the title of this video is a little bit dramatic, but it's not too far from the truth. TF2 is currently experiencing a huge problem with aimbots. Sure, it's not the first time TF2's had a problem with cheaters. I can vividly recall the catbot invasion of uh, 2018, which was a massive annoyance, but it was fairly short-lived and easy to deal with. But this, this seems somehow different more insidious. It's getting to the point where it's having a significant impact on my experience with the game, and so it follows that there is a risk that this could have an effect on the player base. And so you could argue that an attack like this threatens the overall livelihood of the game. Is that what these people want? To end TF2 for good? End dramatic speech. Okay, so what's going on? Well, on average, one in approximately three games you'll come across a blatant aimbot. These guys are of course not very subtle, so it's very easy to spot these snipers looking in strange directions and moving erratically, but here's a list of other things I noticed that you can look out for. They often have the Christmas snow particles effect around them, mockingly perhaps, to make them look more conspicuous. You'll see that they normally spam the chat either with spaces or offensive words, and this is essentially to make it very difficult for other players to communicate with each other. They will use strange names, either that are very short or don't make much sense, or feature something offensive, but most importantly, they will often hijack another player's name. And this caught me out the first time I saw it. I noticed the name on the bot, and I went to go and confront him, and he was a soldier, and I thought, okay, maybe the moment the vote is called, the bot switches class, very sophisticated. But then later, Later I realised that actually these bots were just stealing other people's names, and this is the one key thing I noticed. There are lots of different methods to try and confuse things further so that these bots avoid being kicked for as long as possible. On top of all this, I've seen some with accompanying medic bots, because 100% perfect aim is clearly not enough. I've also seen people cheating, who I'm certain are not bots. I don't know if it's just a coincidence that I've seen one or two people hacking alongside these bots, or if it's somehow connected, but these guys have either spoken to me in chat, or just displayed clear behaviour of borderline intelligent human beings. So again, just confuses things a little bit further. Here I was having the game of my life on Upward, right behind the enemy team, destroying this NG nest. What a beautiful juggle onto this demo night, and I can finish him off too. I'm hitting everything. This is glorious. I cannot wait to use this as a highlight clip in one of my videos. I'm genuinely trying to miss at this point. I mean, it's a roll. There's no denying it. One last point to capture. It's going to be be- And then a hacker. That's fine. We know the protocol. We just stay in spawn and- Okay, this is something new. Is this some kind of cheat? A hacker? An exploit? I mean, this kind of thing would test anyone's patience. And then later in this game, I come across a sniper who's just quite good at the game, and immediately I'm suspicious. But what about this third guy? Who knows anymore? So naturally, this can be a little bit frustrating for all of us. Sometimes it's the first thing I see when loading into a game, people complaining about a hacker. One of the worst experiences I had was just being spawn camped by them. It just removes all enjoyment from the game, but for both teams. In fact, I would say it's equally boring for the team with the hacker on as it is for the other team. So it kind of blows my mind when some Sometimes a vote doesn't go through. And of course, this entire situation has the side effect of creating a lot more suspicion amongst the player base. Even while gathering footage for this video, I was accused of hacking a couple of times, and I was just playing demo. Although to be fair, the name I chose probably didn't help much. And then in this game, I was kicked just for selling bread. Outrageous. The humanity. Just plain rude. So with all this confusion, it's no surprise that when you see a heavy glitching on the payload, or you've just gotten headshot as a scout, your mind starts to wonder, were they hacking? And it becomes very easy for an innocent bystander to get accused. No, Jim, I'm not hacking. I've always had a very simple and nonchalant approach to dealing with bots or hackers, and I think that was the first time I've ever used the word nonchalant in a sentence. But here are my steps. I stop the game, I ask for the kick, 
and I wait. If they kick, then success. If not, I say okay, goodbye. This is of course uh, pretty obvious, pretty simple stuff, but a few tips, a few things that I think are worth mentioning. Because of the spam in chat, you may have to yourself spam this request to have that bot kicked. So just bear in mind, you may wanna copy and paste what you're saying and just keep spamming it in chat so it becomes visible. I find waiting in spawn helps to avoid the frustration of being killed over and over again. Perhaps have a little dance while you wait, why not? Plus, by waiting in spawn, it gives the other team more of an incentive and more time to kick that player or that bot because they won't really have anything else to do. In the case where it's not obviously a bot or a hacker, you can very easily check this either by spectating or by going observer spy with the cloak and dagger just to watch them, see what's going on. Or one thing I like to do is do a ridiculous sticky jump round a corner with the sticky jumper and if they still get the headshot, wow, that's a nice shot, sir. GG. Alternatively, you could go on an epic mission to kill the aimbot so you can get a massive epic frag clip video on Reddit. And actually, Demoman is pretty decent at this because he doesn't need line of sight to kill his enemies, so it's not completely out of the question. I'm pleased to say that the majority of votes go through, and they go through very quickly, but there are a surprising amount that don't, and I'm guessing this is due to the fact that people aren't quite sure. Which is fine, because if you just blindly voted yes, that will probably end up causing other problems. If you're not sure, just simply keep an eye out for them in-game, and you can always create a second vote if necessary. I find that the second vote often tends to get through just because it's given everyone a bit more of a chance to assess the situation and make a decision. But my cynical little brain can't help but think that there might be a few kids out there who kind of get a kick out of having a hacker on their team and getting an easy win. And if that's the case, just bear in mind that by doing this, you might be causing significant harm to the game, not just to that one match. Let's play Douchey Hacker or Just Good at the Game. Okay, so here I wanted to share a couple of clips with you that I'm fairly certain feature real humans as opposed to just bots. I'm 90% sure they're both hacking, but I'd love to see what you guys think. It's a bit like Maxbox's old videos. Good times. So this was a really fun game I was having on Gold Rush during a stream. This engineer had a completely dedicated pocket medic and he was using the Widowmaker to absolutely destroy everyone. For a long time, I just thought he was good at the game, but it was at this critical moment that made me think twice. I then later saw that he had eight dominations and an insane amount of kills, but I'll let you decide. Later on in the same game, just as I felt I was making progress, I bumped into another aimbot, the usual type, the spinny aroundy blatant ones, lovely. In this clip I'm messing about on 2 fort, and I really couldn't tell if this guy was cheating. If he was, he was being pretty subtle about it, and he certainly wasn't a bot because at one point he chatted to me in game. So I decided to check him out and go spy with the cloak and dagger to see if there were any telltale signs. And I don't know about you, but he looks real twitchy to me. Why, for example, does he suddenly aim into his own base at this point? Can he see a spy through a wall? Possibly. Despite all this, I decided to let him off the hook and then go on an epic flanking mission to definitely not focus that one sniper and try and get revenge on him. No, 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 no. But then he caught me out taking a flank route just by using audio cues perhaps? But the one that sealed the deal for me here was when he got me going through the sewers. He could have been looking at the sewers, but would he have been? Very, very suspicious. Before we end the video, I wanted to briefly discuss the biggest question on my mind personally, and that is why? Anyone could do this. It's not like you're proving yourself, and cheating doesn't even guarantee a win or gain you anything. And this is even more true when you're simply hosting a bot. So why do people do it? Well, a long time ago, I made a video discussing this topic. And for me, I think it boils down to attention seeking. Being noticed in this vast, cruel, and uncaring world is all that we ever want. Okay, that was a bit deep. To be fair, they're very likely children who just kind of get a kick out of breaking the rules. We all go through a stage like this in life, and I was wondering if this is the equivalent of kind of smoking weed when you're 14, but for like a geek who doesn't really get out much. This sounds like I'm bitter and I'm trying to, you know, get back at them. On the other hand, because of the extent and the scale of this particular issue, it does feel plausible that there could be some kind of small group of script kiddies on a Discord somewhere discussing how they can ruin the game just for fun and they kind of laugh about it to each other and your guess is as good as mine. All I know is that I would love to be their friends. 
Of course, a one-off joke is fairly harmless. Remember all those griefing videos that were everywhere about 10 years ago? Here's one of the first pieces of footage I ever recorded of TF2. It's me griefing a sniper on 2-4 from about, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago. We all go through stages like this. It's called being an annoying child. I'm still going through this phase, to be fair, but this is getting to the point where there could be consequences that aren't easily reversed. You could argue that TF2 is in a delicate state. Sure, there are die-hard fans who will never put this game down, but I would imagine there's a big chunk of the player base that are on the cusp of quitting, and this kind of thing may just push them over the edge and make them quit TF2 for good. I guess there are different types of hackers or script kiddies, there are people just messing about, there are people genuinely trying to get away with it and get praise or a reputation, but this for me doesn't seem to fit into either of these categories. This feels somewhat more reckless, as I said before more insidious and more douchey. But let's end on a more positive note and take a look at the uplift we saw over Christmas. Pretty juicy. It's always nice to see people coming back for the holidays and uh, enjoying the game again. And I'm pretty sure these aren't all bots anyway. Sorry about the doom and gloom in this video. There are some other videos I'm working on at the moment, but this was kind of at the forefront of my mind. Let me know what kind of experiences you're having at the moment in TF2. This may be naive of me, but I'm pretty sure Valve will fix this before long. They'll probably pause development on Half-Life Alex for this, I would imagine. And whilst you're there Valve, if you could add like an optional kill cam to TF2 that would be great. Makes it a bit easier to find those pesky hackers. A very quick thank you to Vesky for the unusual grim hat. Beautiful! I cannot thank you enough, I love it. And to Beady Honey Bear for his vast array of chocolate bars, sandwiches, bananas, sticky jumpers, just absolute chaos. Thank you. I've had an awesome Christmas break, I hope you guys have too. So thanks for watching as always, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Trust you. It begins in thirty seconds. Kick the cheater.